What's going on, family? It's your brother Lawrence here. It's another episode of Watch God Work. In every episode, we get the distinct pleasure and honor to speak to a brother or sister that's doing exceptional work in every field of human endeavor. And they share their God stories, the ways in which God has been at work through their life and the ways in which God has been at work through their work. And today is no different. I have my brother, our brother, your brother, my brother, DP Jolly, Daniel Paul Jolly. What's up, King? What's going on, Lawrence? What's going on, everybody? <laughs> y'all, y'all hear that Brooklyn flavor, man? It's, di it's different. <laughs> it's different. You hear it, man. <laughs> Brooklyn is different. Shout out, shout out. I can, I can, I can claim it because obviously that's where I came through the world and stayed there a couple years. Um, but, bro, like we were talking a bit offline, man, and I talk about just how much respect I have uh, for creatives. Like, you know, I think from from a God standpoint, God is the greatest creative of all time. But then ultimately being able to capture moments for people that are timeless. People talk about how much they go down a rabbit hole of seeing whether their parents, their friends themselves through time. But then there's also stories that are being told. A picture is worth a thousand words. And so I think when people see pictures, you do something, you take them on a journey, you tell a story through that. Um, and you've done that masterfully. And then like, and I say short time because I think we're all relatively young. We ain't gonna claim, <laughs> <laughs> we ain't gonna claim we ain't on the, oh no, at the ARP yet. You know, like, but you know, uh, from the credits and the people who you're capturing, like uh, who are people who are storytellers, people who are getting out there, you're doing a lot. You're doing something in, in motion picture. You do, you're doing a lot of great work. <laughs> But I, I was saying with you, like, there's a depth to your photos that I think, you know, just makes people say, like, who is the person behind this? And I think if they <laughs> went through your social media, be like, Jesus' favorite photographer. We were like, all right. So, <laughs> so, so but, uh, we, we see where my brother's plugged in at. So um, I, clearly I can't sway in the universe, as I love to say, in, in, in his way, and I can't do justice to your story. But still, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tee it off and lay it up to you, good brother. Who is DP? Who is Daniel Paul Jolly? Oh, deep question. Uh, so DP Jolly, Daniel Paul Jolly. I'm a 20-year-old, growing up in Brooklyn, New York all my life. Uh, never left New York ever. Um, uh, I'm a pew baby. Like, my mom is a prayer band, aunt's a prayer band. And so I went to church, you know, three times a week. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> I had no... No weekends, man. <laughs> hey, you no said church. it like you in recovery, like, yeah, man, I mean, that was me, man. <laughs> <laughs> no weekends in church, but I mean, with that upbringing, it definitely has influenced me um, a lot in terms of like my decisions, um, in terms of my career choices, uh, or even how to decide my uh, career choice. Um, and yeah, it led me to photography. Um, I'm sure we're gonna get into it, but I feel like it was given. Uh, the audience I was given, the gift was was obviously given uh, from God, um, and how it could, um, ooh, and how it could exist in so many different spaces. You know, um, there's uh, this little tagline I heard where like there's gifts that's for the church and gifts that's from the church. Um, Absolutely, I feel like this is why one of the gifts that was from the church, where it was incubated within those four walls. That way, when I am when I applied it to like outside of church, it it, manif it manifested even more beautifully because um, of where the heart is coming from. You know, the heart's not coming from a place of money. It's not coming from a place of pride. It's not coming from a place of fame. It's like, hey, I've done this for people because they asked for it, or because they didn't ask for it, but I've done it there because of the heart there. And when you do it for outside, like people resonate it more, it resonates with people more because they see that, you know, it's not as transactional as they, as they um, perceive it to be, especially working with other people in the same field. So um, that is something that I uh, have pride myself in and really give uh, the glory and honor to God for that the gift is given and how it uh, has been flourishing for all my life. Like, Bro, <laughs> like, yo, we're we going to get into this because I think the, you know, the natural question is, man, like, you know, like, it's like, when you know, when did you fall in love with hip hop, you know, type question, right? It's like, when did you fall in love with the gift? But I think we kind of talked offline about kind of like the context, you know, family from Jamaica, 
right? So there's there's, there's a vibe, and you you got to shoot this down if this is wrong. You know, my family's from Nigeria. You know, who, it, it, when your family is from here, sometimes your options about what they tell you that you need to be doing for your mm. livelihood seems a lot more limited, a lot more conservative in terms of you know, like let A plus B equals C. So <laughs> number one. Just tell us the story about when you had that moment when you recognized you fell in love with this, and then you know, how was it cultivated from a home standpoint? Because you talk about for church, mm-hmm. like tell t- take us on that journey when you like, okay, I got a gift, and two, mm-hmm. am I alone on this, or you know, <laughs> is this being supported, fam? <laughs> uh man, so it's it's funny. Like I I, I resonate with the stories that people say, you know, either be a lawyer, doctor, a nurse, teacher. <laughs> um you know one of your options however um what i realized like even going back to uh, my childhood was that my parents never really pushed me to do a specific thing mm. um it was just and and i think it and i think it aligned with how um and this might sound kind of pat myself on the back but like how God created how my mind to think. Like I was, I'm very like pragmatic in how in my approach to things and how school was. It's like okay, this is the lesson for the week. Test on Friday. Lesson for the week. Test on Friday. So once I got into a pattern, it's like all right, cool. Whatever I learned, I know it's going to be on day Friday. So um, things came naturally to me. Test came naturally to me. So on paper, it's like oh, you're smart. You know what to do. Like so to to them from the outside looking in. To them, they're like all right, you're going to be fine. Like, right? <laughs> you're going to make this, you're going to make a, a decision, however it's going to be. Um, so when I said I want to be a son, and it's funny how it goes into this, because looking, looking back, how it's like God really orchestrate art and creativity from, from the very beginning. Um, where it's like, oh, at first I want to be a scientist. And um, I realized it's not because I like science, it's because I like making volcanoes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like I like I like creating the things like oh this does this and creates that mm. not necessarily anything on the periodic table like once I saw that into high school I was like yeah that's not for me um then there was something I saw called and it was a joke it was like called mountain engineering but that's because I saw something <laughs> in um on Disney when they're in Anaheim and they're creating Bear Mountain so I hear Imagineer and when they were doing that I was like oh there's that but Looking back, it's like, oh, they were creating like this this amusement, this this ride in in uh, in, in another place. So that's what draw that's what drawn it to me. Not that they were actually making mountains. It was like we're creating a park. Um, but back to like the house, the the household uh, upbringing. Yeah, they never really pushed me to anything until my mom, in particular, when I declared my major, and my major was art and entertainment management. Uh, so it was a BBA, uh, business administration bachelor degree. Um, where it was like, why well, I want to be in arts? And I mean, we're on we're on the the platform, so I'm pretty sure people understand where um, there are some dark circles within the mm-hmm. art and yeah, yeah. world. So once you once a, a Caribbean or a or an African Af- uh, um, mother hears that, they're like. Oh, you're gonna be influenced, you know. Um, you know, evil crew, evil communication corrupts good manners. Was the was the verse of of, of the week, or verse of the month, verse of the year, verse of my college life, of like, okay, be careful when you're here, be careful when you're there. So it was like, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do that? Um, but I was always drawn to creativity, always drawn to the art, and I wanted to do business at first so once i saw that degree as a combination of business and art i'm like oh this is perfect so i jumped into that and once photography kicked in i believe two years no while i was in college actually um i always had a camera um back in the day before we had iphones and smartphones you know you had the trifecta you had the ipod you had the phone and you had the and you had a point and shoot camera, yep. so <laughs> three separate things, guys. That that's outdated VR. Um, so I had the point and shoot, so I was always shooting. Uh, but I hadn't really like learned the skills until I went to college in film photography, um, a class in film photography rather. And then with while within that, I started shooting. And people said, "Oh, you're really good." So I started doing like little small gigs, 
And then I was like, I like this. And my mom looked at it like, why do you want to do photography? Is this sustainable? Like, do you want to do this? My dad was all for it. My dad bought me the <laughs> Like <laughs> in the back, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he bought me the upgraded camera. I was like, word? I was like, I, are we late? Yeah. Um, yeah. My mom was like really slow into the curve until she saw like the fruit of the labor. And it's like, mm. all right, cool. Um, but yeah, on my mom's side, it was more so like remain grounded spiritually rather than like what it is um, in the career because, you know, uh, all is vanity, this uh, life is fleeting. So, you know, yeah, you get the job now, but you know, that, that title, like the photographer, like once we get into the kingdom is like, all right, man, we all here. Um, the titles are, the titles are breaking down. So that was her kind of, uh, mindset where it was like, all right, once you're doing something that pays, it's all good. Yeah. Um, but just don't be corrupted. She was, she was more fear of me being influenced rather than the job itself. Um, but yeah, man, uh, six years later, kind of proved her wrong. <laughs> and she's bro, coming around to bro, me. You know, it's interesting just I, no, just seeing the, the providence and like, you know, what people with other, many people who may not know the guy would call it coincidence, but we covered that through providence around one. Because typically you see in the arts this, this dynamic where uh, you have someone who's, you know, gifted, divinely gifted in a art or creative space, but don't have, does not have the business acumen, right? Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to sustain, honor, own the IP, do things in a sustainable way. So you still found yourself in a position where the pragmatic you was able to get the business and then the art, and then ultimately also cultivate your talent. I, I wonder, because you talked about these moments when you're kind of like hearing from people say kind of like, oh, yo, you really good. Yo, you like, this boy's good, right? Like, you know, like that, that kind of feedback, you know, yeah. w when did, when was your first kind of like God moment where it was just like, oh, okay. Like, you know, beyond, beyond this, just saying, okay, God, I'm good at this. And people are kind of booking me where you just, there's a moment where you had to sit back and say, yo, this only God, like only God made this thing happen. Only, why am I here? You know, like, what was the first moment when you had that, when that really hit you? Um, I would say 2016. So this was when I was like still shooting around, posting on my IG just to post on my IG. And then there were two brothers. Uh, well, they're not actually brothers, but like two cats uh, named Ron and Daniel. Um, shout out to them. They uh, liked my pictures, and I kind of saw how their profiles were similar. So I'm like, all right, these people work together. I don't know how, but they work together. Then I found out they uh, had like a agency that was uh, around at that time. And so I just asked for an internship or whatever. And I was like, yeah, for sure. Um, and so the process was very seamless. And then I was uh, um, onboarded as business development. But on the side, it's like when they had events, um, then I'll be shooting at those events. And so when I'm in those spaces of shooting the events, I'm meeting like, uh, you know, quad, high, like what people may see as high quality people, high caliber people. Um, who have some sort of celebrity. Um, so events, I'm like, yo, how did I get here, man? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, tell us, yo, tell us about, tell us about a specific event, man. Like where you're like, yo, like, you know I mean, like tell us about a night where you're like, yo, why am I here? Am I like, is that real? You know, like just like, hey, yo, <laughs> tell us about one specific night. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to fast forward. Uh, I'm going to fast forward. That was a uh, 2019, um, man. Man, you got me fast forward and there's so many building blocks to it, man. But I'll nah, uh, this, nah, we'll, we'll get back to it. Don't worry. All right. So that's the moment called uh so Creative Collective NYC, that's that's family, that's love. Shout out to them. They have an annual event called CultureCon. Um and so uh I was brought in to do the photo the photography lead uh for that. So that included me um finding photographers to shoot the event. Um we're having me edit the pictures the same day for it to be posted on social media in real time. So yes, long, <laughs> heavy lift day. Yeah. Uh, but shooting wise, uh, how it happened was that there was a photographer who wasn't able to make it. So I had to step in and film the shots. So I had the camera, so I had to leave my little, uh, little basement <laughs> where they put me away to edit. Um, and I was like, all right, cool. I got the shot. And then this was a uh, Tracy Ellis Ross. Um, and so she was about to come on the stage, uh, to have to be on the panel. And I was like, all right, bet. So let me make sure I get the shot, make sure I edit it.
wait a and then looking back sitting down i'm like yo i got trace taylor's for a hard drive like she's photogenic right like this oh this, this thing got wings right like this this yes. got wings bro like like you, I, I say this because I think you know there's so many brothers and sisters who are hearing this who are kind of who are in, who are creative, who have been gifted, and you know I think especially early on, but I mean, even kind of like I think even if you've kind of been doing it for a couple of years, it, it's like some you, sometimes you need second winds, right? Mm-hmm. You know, your, your second winds, especially over this past year for some people where uh, their their budgets, their events, the things that they you know eat with were kind of slowed down. They need these moments where it's kind of like God's like like God's winking, like whispering at them, like keep going, you know, keep going, keep going. And so, you know, I, even for you, kind of that moment being like a big kind of like confirmation, like, look, even you didn't have even much time for that. You weren't even planning to do that. And you did that. And look what happened. That's an amazing and a beautiful thing. But even as you said, it was a slow it was a build. So like, how was how are you? What was your conversation? With God? How was God? like checking in along the way <laughs> like how are you kind of encountering experiencing god from the okay now i'm doing this internship from these people that i happen to see who like my photo who happened to see that it was similar i happened to just sign up and continue to work with them what was that slow build what were some of the moments that kind of were leading and building you up in your career cool um so good question uh so the conversations like in prayers i have are am i doing like, am, am I doing this right? Is this the purpose I'm, I'm doing? Um, and honestly, God reminded me of his sovereignty, where it's like, all right, but look, look, look at what you've been doing as a, since a kid and how it reflects off to now. So when I mentioned, mm-hmm. like, you know, I want to be a scientist, not because I like science, but because I like making things. I didn't want to be a mountain engineer. I wanted to be a Disney Imagineer because of how they create um in church uh i kind of uh got plugged into uh a lot of things in church uh so like i was like a youth secretary and i'm missing services because i'm finding the right colors for the calendar uh for 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 the youth department i'm uh then i got moved into multimedia so it's like okay shuffling to figure out you know and finding the right uh, how, how to deliver it in a more creative way in a, in a more aesthetically pleasing way and just those reminders of the small things that I definitely pro- definitely take it for granted I just like I'm just doing what I had to do but it's like okay look how this is creative this is creative this is creative so what makes you think I can't well what, 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 what makes you think that this isn't right whereas like mm. this is this, mm. like here is something that you're thriving in in terms of creative because this is the gift I've given you from as a child, like, so it just always, it's like those small things that I've taken for granted as a child are not, that, that, I can't even say take for granted, I was a kid, so it's not it's like that, that level of understanding wasn't there yet, but then just being reminded like, okay, look how, look, 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 look at the common thread, and if this is the common thread that makes sense and how it's, it's fruitful, not in terms of finances, but fruitful for your soul, fruitful for your purpose, where it's like, you don't, you don't feel tired or you lost something after you've done it. You felt, mm. you, you, you've gained more, you've, you, you feel more inspired. Even, even when you physically feel tired, mentally, spiritually, you, you're, you're full because you've, you, you put your best for you. I did it with spirit of excellence. You did it with, 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 with me on mine. So why think this isn't for you? Mm. So it was those smaller things that really, that really got me, um, you know, a uh, solid and be confident with it. And of course I have my doubts all the time, man. Like one time it was like a strong word where it's like, yo, just go, just go. Because like I mentioned, I'm, I'm pretty pragmatic. So the logic in me comes like, okay, if this doesn't, I don't, this, the X, I don't know what the X is. And the one, and I can't move until I get that X. Like, like the, the if, once I figure out the unknown, then I'm good. And it's like, yo, faith, trust. All those type of reminders that just like just go and do it because look at the past. The common thread is the mm-hmm. common denominator is there. So if if anything, trust that common denominator and it'll always keep going. And just just walk it in that man. Like even even now where my nine to five is photography. <laughs> like 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 a I have like a job where I don't have to 
like where I, at first I clocked in and out at, for customer service and then they saw me do photography and it's like, oh, we have a photography position within the within the um, company and they moved into that. So I'm like, man, I got benefits while doing what I've been doing, sitting down like on the side. And it's just like, yeah, God, this is this 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 is you. So just seeing that, man, just just looking back, looking back at the past and, and, the, and the small moments really, really ground me. This is, bro. When I when I say, man, this is it's like teaching, but you're just you're just talking, you're just sharing. And <laughs> the reason why I say this is, is is actually really important is that you said it in a very kind of like matter of fact way, but um, even in the the time that you were talking about earlier, thinking about okay, it wasn't that I liked the volcano, it was just I like to create. It wasn't that I was thinking about the engineer or trying to animate. Like just the actual clarity, right? That you had to actually understand the why under the why. I do think it's something that in some sense it's obviously grace, but it's also some sense of like, that's, that's real wisdom because I think for so many people, they're still asking, they don't, they're still trying to figure out that. And I think that there is a common thread of looking back, like in remembrance, like look back at how I've been faithful, look back at all the things and seeing God and all of those things being so important. But just that is it, would you just say it was that just the way God has wired you that pragmatism of getting under it? Or did you have to have people kind of speak into, you know, hey, that's not what it was like, you know, like that, that give you clarity around what these common threads were. So, like, how did you arrive at such clarity around the whys, right, um, you know, along the way and how they connect? Um, definitely the former. Um, I think that's just how God has wired my brain. Um, mm -hmm. My mom reminds me to, to not lean onto that a lot. <laughs> uh, the the <laughs> pragmatism. Um, but, yeah, definitely my because uh, I have siblings, but I like to tell my mom that she raised a second only child because the one, my sister is like 17 years older than me. So it's like two different generations. So technically I think like an only child, like I never had to share enough to do anything. So I always stuck to myself. Um, and, w and within those moments where and my mom had me like at, at, a, at, a, at an older age, um, like 40 plus. So after raising a full adult, then I had to raise a kid it's tiresome while my sister um is trying to figure out her own life so then sometimes it's like if i need help <laughs> i'm a little tired my sister working on something else all i got is me <laughs> so i just kind of <laughs> stuck to myself <laughs> just stuck to myself and, and, and just try to figure things out on my own mm. um and then like leading into like um spiritually with like the Holy Spirit and, and letting that speak, speak through in, in, in different avenues um, is definitely the latter. I mean, the former, where it's like my brain was just wired that way. Like, all right, this is, this needs to be done because all, all I could do is like, I can't really ask here. I can't, my, before, mm. it was like, I can't ask here. I can't ask here. So I only could ask God or, or mm. had a conversation with, with God and myself because mm. just, just growing up, it's just always been like, I can't hear, I can't go here. I can't go here. All I got is me. This is no, I I appreciate it because I think the natural question for me was just a, a lot of times if you come up, you know, you hear the story of my friends, colleagues, so many people who've shared their stories, you know, here in the family here is like, it's like there's levels. Mm -hmm. There is my faith because this was all I knew, and I came to know God as an obedient child who was in church, and like I learned, like it was like a foundation, it built a foundation, but then there was like another level when it was like I'm really, really on my own. And like I had to experience like God and God had to become good news for me separately. But it seems like at least there was a process of kind of being having to kind of really connect with God and answer questions early right? for you because you're like, I ain't got no place to go. Right. Um, but 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 even from kind of like the all right now I'm 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 of, I'm of age. I'm, an, I'm 18 plus I'm in college. I'm doing all these things. You know, was there kind of like another moment where kind of like God became like real beyond the work and beyond your gifting where it's just like, oh, OK, God, you've always been there with me. But now there's a different level of like why I need you in my life. Did that would you have that experience like many people or not really? Uh, I think if there's a percentage, I would call it like like probably like 60 percent, like where that is, because, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. again, mentioning arts and entertainment management is a new major. To like a lot of people, so they're like, "What is this?" Like, and I, t I try to like comfort them. I was like, it's a BBA, it's a business administration. Like, comfort them, yo. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like it's, it's it's not a fallacy. It's, it's not the liberal arts. It's not how people kind of slander some other degrees. I'm like, yo, it's a VBA. It's a legit. Um, and so when it's like all I got is God, it's like okay, the support, the the support is not 100 percent from a mom. Um, my father who uh is is unchurched. Let me just say that is unchurched. Um, there are some things I can't connect to him with. So even if I said, oh, I felt led to do this, I'm talking about spiritual sense. He's talking about in the, in the, in the, he has a different foundation with that. So I can't really go to connect with it. And then everyone else is just like, okay, sure. Why not? So again, it goes back to, all right, God, yeah, I feel it here to do this, <laughs> but no one else is really believing in me about this. So, mm. I, so I had to, so I kind of, at that point, I was like, I had to lean into it. And then part of me is like a contrarian. It's like, I'm going to do it whatever. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> like, so <laughs> so, it, so that's where the other 40% is like, I'm going to just do it anyway. Uh, but I had to lean on to be like, okay, God, I don't know where it's going to take me, but this fits. So mm. I'm going uh, I'm, I'm to I'm 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 depend on you for it. I don't know where it's going to take me, but I'm going to depend on you for it. <laughs> Bro, that, it, it, it's faith, man. I have to ask you this piece, man, around... Uh, typically we call it like it's almost like um creative thesis like theses right where you know uh, you you feel that you're given this gift um of photography or movies or you know for people in this creative but they feel that they have a call specifically for a type of expression within the noise and within the ethos of the world right somebody says like you and so you know when if somebody's coming to the your photos what story, no matter what photo you're ever taking with the create, let's say you have the all creative direction, no matter who it is, what it is, what is the story you're trying to tell and put out into the world through your gift? What is the consistent theme in how you approach your photography where you step away to say that is a DP photo? Mm-hmm. You know, that's a, that's a this. What, what, what story are you trying to tell with your life through your gift? Um, I think it's two parts. The first one is I want to exude joy um and in my photography um i think us as and this is in a matter and speaking in a matter of fact where it's like us as black people you know we kind of inspired by our trauma Mm. (laughs) a lot of times Mm. our work is shown about like (laughs) um by our scars our work is shown by um the the sadness that we show uh, or we've experienced throughout uh, us being marginalized. And then so seeing, I just want to exude, exude joy because of course that is a fruit of the spirit as well. Uh, mm. I'm going to connect that to my second one where, you know, even that is our resistance. I know that was a common last year where like even our joys, our resistance, just us living is proof of, is, of, is proof of our, um, that we're still fighting. Us living is still mm. fighting. Um, mm. And with, again, when I said joy through the spirit, it's like I also want to show that there are, show the many sides of God. Um, uh, some people have this, you know, idea or this lens of how they see God, whether it's like this um, hippie, <laughs> this church, this, this hippie, or this um, a ruling judge, which, yes, there is a nuance to, to both sides. However, it's like, what about these other size that that really that we probably take for granted where it's like god gave us personalities like <laughs> we are we have these different sides of us so there's this one like ongoing project i'm uh been working on uh since 2019 2019 yes 2019 um where it's called the sum of all our parts and i want to show the different sides of our emotions how how we see ourselves how people perceive us and and yeah like the good and the bad and how you could inch, like still embrace those parts you're not putting on a mask where it's like um all right people see me as the happy go lucky person even though i'm really an introvert and i want it and i want to stick to myself so you don't have to feel like i i'm, I'm this these sides are fighting like no god gave you these qualities of you so why not embrace those things and mm. I feel like that still honors God as how intricate of a designer he is. We're just like, I'm not just going to make people and um, 
make them be different aesthetically, but different emotionally, different mentally, different on how uh, they approach life. And that just shows how, how, how much of a designer he is. Just like even those small things that we're like, all right, that's, that's just how we were built. It's like, yeah, but look who built us. And that mm. glorifies him as, 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 as of his glory and his greatness. So that in terms of like my personal work is like, that's something I want to exude. So even it's like, look, God made things. He, he looked at everything and called it good. So why not create beautiful work as well? So those are the two things, man, like exude joy and definitely to show the many sides of God. Bro, Bro man, it, it's, um, it's refreshing, man. You know, I think because there's a lot, especially in this time, I, it, this is a different, we're living in different times right? Absolutely. And, and for, for better, for worse. And I think for better is that there's so much information, mm-hmm. so much that people are consuming uh, for, for digitally, right? In ways that n- we've never seen before. And I think there, there has to be a concerted effort to put that out there, to display that, because I think there's a lot to, um, to your point on the front, on the front end uh, of part one of joy, kind of have people center on that and that alone. And you can almost convince yourself similar, like the movies. It's not like, it's like, no, it's not that we're not trying to say that the slave narratives are not powerful parts of the story, but could we have also other movies like where we're having, in, we're enjoying ourselves, we're traveling, we're enjoying life. Could we have the full palette? Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're, you're giving, you're giving that to cut through the noise. In, in, in ways that I think are really, 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 really powerful, man. You know, you know, I think even now as this is going on, what what do you what do you kind of see ahead in terms of the things that you say, I feel like God is asking me to get this done, right? Do you feel like there's a point, even with the project, you feel like kind of like the sum of all our parts, is these kind of one of those things where you feel like God has said, like, create this, leave this for my people. Are there other things that you say, you know, that you're dreaming about to say, you know what, I want to do this. Or you're like, hey, I want to be a DP in a movie, you know, of, of a big, big, you know, motion picture. Like, where's your mind going as you imagine the future of your work and your gift? Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely see myself more in the background kind of sense. Uh, mm. Not necessarily production, but in publication. Like, what's been on my mind heavy is really um, having a... a a magazine, and I, I know that's uh, pretty lofty in terms of a digital age <laughs> of having print magazines. Uh, but that is something I, I definitely want to dive dive into, like twofold. Still showing like us create like us creating beautiful work, beautiful art, um, but also highlighting the you know the trailblazers, the pioneers within with within the industry, um, and also given a platform for for other black creators uh other uh, uh creators like myself who are starting and they want to um find find something else like they don't have to keep throwing darts at vogue and vanity fair when it's like all right here's another publication that could confirm you even affirm you even more or even more holistically <laughs> um mm. fi- financially and, and 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 mentally and make and emotionally to make sure like yo you belong here like you 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 belong here we're not we're not keeping you uh, hostage here, but you're still family here because your work is being amplified and resonates to to more people. You're not just another September cover, and then we're gonna forget about you in the, in the November cover. It's like we're gonna l- give you the opportunity, give you the resources for you to create your work how how you want to create it, and still keep that bottom line like yo, you're creating beautiful work and you're creating joy for other people to to connect with. Um, also, I I did this like little. I started this last year during the pandemic. Was been on my mind for years, and that was a uh, uh, my merch line called God Bless Creative. I'm wearing one of the shirts here. Oh, uh, shout out! I saw that. <laughs> I wasn't trying to come at you for the for the for the for the XL. Okay, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So it just it, it's been on my heart, and that's because I um, when I was studying and and reading, there was a scripture, um, Exodus 31. And it was uh, mentioned about two people, um, Bezael and Oholiabab. And this is during the time when it, uh, Israelites were uh, in the wilderness uh, 40 years and they were building a tabernacle. And um, God called these two people. And specifically in verse 3, he's like, I give the, uh, the spirit to them to, to give them all ability, uh, now, intelligence, knowledge, and craftsmanship. And when I saw the connection of like, and further on, it was like, you know, um, 
with the ability to, for wood and gold, silver, bronze, um, and, and, and all matter all matter of craftsmanship. What I liked about it was that there was a connection between the spirit of God filled them with this gift. And in a church setting, sometimes we kind of only look at preaching, teaching, singing, preaching, teaching, singing as like these things. Anything else, you're a lay member. And it's like, mm. hold up now. If we're the body, there's different parts of the body. And, you know, sometimes we say when these these spiritual gifts or oh, there we go, like these spiritual gifts is kind of uh, locked into just this this fivefold ministry. But here it is in scripture. I'm not making this up. It's not a TED talk. It's saying like spirit of God filled them with craftsmanship. Mm. Craftsmanship is a spiritual gift as well. So why? So 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 God is blessing us with with this creativity. God has given us these abilities and they're building a tabernacle. They're building a holy place for people to come together and to commune and to fellowship. So God filled them with that gift to build that. And I'm and bringing it to here. It's like God's given us these creative gifts to build his kingdom, mm -hmm. just like he gave them. Mm -hmm. So, so that just kind of just stirred in me a lot. It's like, God bless the creative where it's like, look, God gave you this gift, even though, even feel like no one is affirming it, God affirmed it already. God been from this is the second book in the Bible we're talking about. And he we didn't go too far. Mm -hmm. And you already affirmed that this is a spiritual gift for you. So even if you feel like, man, I'm just, you know, a starving artist and I'm never gonna make it out, like it's a look, you keep going because God already affirmed that gift in you. So you keep you keep striving, you keep mastering your craft because just know that it's a God-given gift. And you don't need you don't need someone else to affirm it for you. Right. So that's just that's been a message I've been wanted to share now, and just some, something I'm I'm really passionate about uh, in, in this moment, even even more than the magazine, honestly. But that that's just something I'm passionate about, just really reminding people like, yo, your gifts are from God. You don't you don't necessarily need to be preaching, teaching, or playing an instrument or singing to be validated within the church walls or even in a marketplace. But like, like. It, it, it feels a battle. Like sometimes we're just like, if I'm not validated in church, then I got to be validated outside of church. And I'm scared to be validated outside of church because of what it could take me or or the spiral or the downward spiral that could happen. So, so let me try to get that in here, even though I don't like it, even though I'm not comfortable with it, even though it's not really my calling. Let me try to figure out something here. And God is like, no, I gave you a gift already. Use that gift and let it manifest with incubate here so that it it will stretch out right like mm. you you right. like like i'm being creative in church help me to be creative outside i always look at my mom who's who um you know she might hate me if i say it but it's cool like up the east side you know ha, like um like like private like a private caregiver so she has this gift of hospitality that even translates to her leading hospitality in church for a time so mm. it's so that's the gift that was given there how it worked within the marketplace it's working inside church so that way you f it feels fulfilling you don't feel like you're fighting you don't feel like you have to turn off the switch in your mind like oh man i went to work um building stuff but when i go uh to church all i'm doing is singing like nah man you were building outside why not help build something in here too with your hands Bruh. like hey, you're brilliant <laughs> go, go, I mean, like you're just talking about like you take yourself with you and right you know, the, the, the thing that I think, think is, is powerful, man, it like literally a, 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 a led this kind of building room I call a study. And la last week we, we were in, we were doing Exodus entire thing. And we walked through that piece. Mm -hmm. And the part of it is this is like you're reading for how many chapters, like the design of the tabernacle. You're like these, how many cubits and all this. And then in your mind, you're like, dag, man, this is so detailed. And not thinking that God had already provided within that community, the, t the people who would be able to understand those directions and carry it out because they were gifted to do it. And so even as you were talking about the magazines, there was something so powerful around the, the, the fact that, that it gives people an opportunity to live out just the calling that God has placed upon their life, right? You know, like I kept and keep Essence magazines from years ago and things just because I just like the picture. I just like the picture and what it represented, what it represented about our people and different things. And so Bro, like you, but you're going off in like in, in in a good way, and it's a message that people need to hear, because I do think that there are a lot of people who are disillusioned, mm -hmm. right? Because they're like, I feel out of order. Like there's, I don't feel this is true to me, 
and I forced myself into a model, into a place that I don't think I was designed to. And I think usually people just, people want to squelch that out. And I don't want people to miss that, you know, in what you're saying, bro. I think that this is, bro, you got, you're, you're, you know, like, um, man, I, like, I always, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by creatives because I think in some sense I could appreciate creative, right? But I also feel that that also is like the CPU, the RPM mm-hmm. is always high. like the CPU is like, is like, is like having too many like tabs open. So it's like, <laughs> It's always running hot. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, so I mean, so 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 with that, man, I just think this would be a word for everybody. How do you how do you keep a sustainable rhythm with God? Mm-hmm. You know, in this season, what does your rhythm with God look like on a day to day basis? Because you have you and this is life giving, of course, right? Mm-hmm. Your gifts, but you're still in your head. You're still in your your heart. You're like you're in your imagination. And sometimes, uh, like, I, how does what does your life look like from a rhythm standpoint? That how do you connect with God? given the creative outlets and creative demands you have? Mm -hmm. Uh, Great question. Uh, I've been getting into that flow uh, past few weeks now. Uh, Yeah, you know, being transparent, you know, you know, not been perfect, not, 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 not been, uh, you know, definitely uh, more, more ebbs than, than flows. uh, If you get what I mean. And then sometimes, like get into that moment where it's like you know you have to t- again talking to God with amongst yourself like you know something is wrong like this got to be fixed so trying to what I've been doing now is having those like little conversations and really being intentional with it and believe I got to believe I'm talking to God even in, in even those moments because sometimes people like, I'm just talking to myself it's like no if you intentionally like look God this I don't like this I need this needs to be shipped. And however that moment could be, if it's a dedicated moment of prayer, let it be a dedicated moment of prayer. If it's you walk into the train station, then you walk to the train station. However that moment is, just be intentional with it. Um, also from December, I uh, started going to therapy as well. Mm, shout out. Shout, shout out to therapy, out. man. Yo. Yo. Life changing. Ten years, bro, bro. bro, bro. I, I believe in it. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe, bro. I believe, bro. Uh, man. And... What and that that was like uh, God's plan too because at first I didn't want to have like a quote unquote Christian therapist because it was like the perspective is going to be like, like look man I don't want to hear the church though I want to hear your your professional mm-hmm. advice on what is going on right now <laughs> and <laughs> happen to be Christian I'm like okay like <laughs> yeah. happen to be Christian I'm like okay I can escape it fine um and. It, it changed my mind. Like, all right, the perspective is different. Um, on 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 what I, on on what what my expectation was if I were to have if I knew going into it this is a Christian therapist, but having to, mm-hmm. but then having the therapy and then noticing that we share uh like faith is like okay cool. So she was able to speak into things that I didn't know he's speaking into from a professional standpoint from a spiritual standpoint. Um, and that has definitely realigned me a lot. Um, you know, be, you know, trust in to show up as my full, full self. Um, so even that kind of confirmed the whole sum of all those parts of project where it's like show up as your full self and embrace all those parts of you. Um, so my rhythm right now is waking up, um, try to have my, you know, workout. Um, and then what I've been doing now is at the end of these workouts, like at the gym I go to, there's like this, um, you know, little stretching areas and things like that. And it's in the morning. So, um, it's pretty empty. So there I'm already sitting, I'm just sitting down peacefully, probably like 10, 15 minutes, have worship music playing. I'm just sitting in silence and just pray. And I've been doing that at the end of every workout. Um, And that has really fueled me to even go throughout the day where it's like, all right, this is what's going on, God. Help me direct me into this path. You know, I uh, seriously, my little prayer there. And then, you know, just trust God with that. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of it is trust. A lot of it is trust, <clears throat> and 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 see where it shows. <clears throat> My brother, man, this is this is this is a gift, man. Like we we, 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 we there are many more conversations in faith we're gonna have, uh, you know, from this, man. But you know, this is a good deposit, bro. Um, I think it gives people a picture of just trusting the path, mm-hmm. trusting the journey, uh, trusting the the providence, trusting the gifts, 
um, the, the importance of not only uh, having an opportunity to exercise your gift, but creating opportunities to exercise your gift for people. Um, mm-hmm. The importance of having a thesis um, that is connected to God and, and his hope um, for his expression and, and his presence in the world of, of the joy, the importance of that, and the importance for people to see that and people to see all facets and be able to live out all facets of the expression. Bro, it, it, it's for that and much more, man. I thank you, brother, man, for this time and for sharing your story, brother, man. But I, 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 I just get the sense many, many, many more people are going to hear your story um, through your work. And so, brother, I, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you. Brother, how can people find you. you? How can people connect with you, man? How can people book you? Because we know that you're busy, so we can't afford you now. So- <laughs> Uh, man, I mean, find me on all those socials. I like to say my SEO is popping. DP Jolly, Google, <laughs> IG, Twitter, uh, website is all there. Um, you can book me through my website. Uh, DM me, you know, if you want to just connect and, 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 and talk, I'm open to that too. Uh, so yeah, DP Jolly on on I own everything. <laughs> bro, bro, the salute, and I don't know people got. Don't let that go over your head. The, the marketers understand. <laughs> That's your <SEO> puppet. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> so, my brother, man, all respect to you, man, all love to you, man. Um, you know, brother, we always, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be championing you to, 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 to this, to this thing fall off, man. So, I'm, I'm with you, man, on everything that you got going on, and I thank you for being faithful with the gift that He's given you, man. Salute, brother. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you, man. Uh, Appreciate it. Yeah.